contrary to the Ten Commandments. Groups such as the Seventh-day Adventists, uh, they object to Sunday worship as being a violation of God's commands. They criticize the Catholic Church for what they say is changing one of God's eternal decrees. But let's examine the scriptural evidence to see what conclusions we should draw. First, notice that in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 10, God says to Moses, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work. This commandment was a perpetual covenant that God wanted his people to observe through the ages. We can read about that in Exodus 31, for example. Henceforth, the Jews have observed the Sabbath on Saturday, resting from all work and emulating God's own rest on the seventh day of creation, which we read about in Genesis chapter 2. This commandment was not abandoned by the Catholic Church, as some people erroneously claim. Rather, the observance of the third commandment to keep holy the Sabbath was transferred to Sunday, also known as the Lord's Day. You read about that in Acts chapter 20 and 1 Corinthians 16, for example. It's called the Lord's Day because it is through His resurrection that we become a new creation, which we're told in 2 Corinthians 5. Around the year 100, the Didache, an ancient Christian document, instructed Christians to gather together on the Lord's Day. In A.D. 155, St. Justin Martyr wrote a letter to the Roman Emperor mentioning that the early church celebrated the Eucharistic liturgy on Sundays instead of Saturday. Clearly, this practice was already universal. The primary reasons the early church transferred the observance of the Third Commandment from Saturday to Sunday are these. Number one, Sunday is the day Christ rose from the dead. And as St. Paul said, if Christ did not rise from the dead, we are the most pitiable of people because our faith is in vain. Number two, the early Christians sought to differentiate themselves from Judaism. This included their abandonment of Judaism's system of ritual animal sacrifices. Christ, who is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, and His perfect sacrifice replaced the old covenant Passover lamb that was ritually slain and consumed as a mere symbol of sacrifice for sin. Similarly, circumcision, the Jewish uh, ceremonial rituals and precepts, the kosher food laws and dietary restrictions, all those things that were imposed by the law of Moses in Deuteronomy 12 and, and elsewhere, all of those things, including the observance of the Passover and other Jewish feast days, were also relinquished by Christians. Third, the early Christians wanted to show forth the true meaning of the Sabbath, which achieved its full purpose in the new covenant of Christ, in whom we find our perfect and ultimate rest. As Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come to me, all you who are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. The fourth reason the church transferred the observance was that the old covenant, including the Sabbath, temple ceremonies, animal sacrifices, etc., all of that prefigured in a shadowy, incomplete, and imperfect way the perfect fulfillment by Christ in and through the new covenant. The old covenant observances were but, as uh, the book of Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5 says, types and shadows of heavenly realities. Once the perfect had come, the imperfect prefigurements passed away. This is as true of the way the church observes the third commandment on keeping holy the Sabbath as it is true with baptism replacing the old covenant ordinance of circumcision. Remember, St. Paul wrote, Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. We read that in Colossians chapter 2. Uh, and in Galatians 4, verses 9 through 11, St. Paul scolded Christians who still cling to the old covenant restrictions and, and ceremonies. The ritual observance of the Sabbath was part of the old covenant. But in Christ, we are no longer bound by the old covenant. So the demands and the obligations of the old covenant, including the ritual observance of the Sabbath, have passed away, having been replaced by the spiritual observance of the Sabbath in the new covenant. Interestingly, in Matthew 19, verses 16 through 22, Christ enumerated the Ten Commandments except for observing the Sabbath when he was asked what one must do to be saved. Now, Seventh-day Adventists, however, will argue that the Catholic Church had no authority to change the Third Commandment. 
But the fact is the Catholic Church was established by Christ and was granted by him the authority to, as he said, bind and loose. We read that in Matthew 18, 18. He gave the church his own authority to teach. Now, uh, since Christ revealed that he is the Lord even of the Sabbath day, which we read about in Matthew 12 and Mark 2 and Luke 6, and since the Sabbath, he said, was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, it follows that Christ's church also has a share in his authority. So as Christ said to Simon Peter, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We read that in Matthew 16, verses 19 and forward. Notice also that the Seventh-day Adventists themselves do not observe the, quote, eternal commandment of circumcision given by God to Abraham in Genesis 17. This commandment predated the Ten Commandments given to Moses by hundreds of years. And it had no less weight of authority than the Ten Commandments. And yet, as even Seventh-day Adventists are forced to admit, since they do not practice ritual circumcision, even though the Bible shows that Jesus Christ nowhere expressly taught that God's commandment regarding circumcision was to be changed to the sacrament of baptism, the Church had the authority, Christ's authority, to enact that change. And in so doing, it did not abandon God's eternal commandment regarding circumcision, but instead it observed that commandment in a new and perfected form, that of the sacrament of baptism. Read about this in Galatians 3 and Colossians 2. This is an excellent parallel with the church's authority to transfer the observance of the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. It was not an abandonment of God's law, but rather a fulfillment and a perfecting of that law. As Christ explained, Think not that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. I'm Patrick Madrid, author of the book, Where is That in the Bible? Don't be a crash test dummy when it comes to knowing your faith. Who are the 